If we can't find these X and Y intercepts, things don't look so good. All right, athletes. So what I got up for you is some review uh, for us to get practice on X and Y intercepts. All right, so I created a little homework for us so that in case you forgot, let me refresh your memory. All right, Matthew, so let's take a look at what we got here. All right, so given a linear equation, so we have a line, right? We don't know how this line is going, but we have a line and it says, how do you find the X intercept, right? And how do you find the Y intercept? All right, so let's look at our choices here. So for part one of this question, to find the X intercept, we are gonna substitute so when you want that X intercept, right? So let's draw a picture here to help us out. So if we have a, our X, Y coordinate plane and say you have a line and you want the X intercept. Remember what that means is when you're looking at this line, it's the line, right? It's that point where that line crosses our X axis. So here is our X axis, right? So this is our X axis. This is our Y axis. And we're trying to figure out where does this line right here cross my X axis. So, so we could see at this point right here, that's where this line crosses this X axis, right? Notice what that height is. So this height of that point is zero. So you have to ask yourself, which value, which um, variable, the X or the Y variable is associated to the height. So we know that the Y variable is associated to the height. So what you do to find the X intercept, you always, always, always let Y equal zero. All right. And we solve for, since Y is zero, we're going to solve for the X because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that X intercept. All right. Part two to find the Y intercept. So if I'm looking at that same graph here, there's my Y intercept, right? Uh, let me draw on it. Let me do, do a little dot right here. Boom. There's our Y intercept. And notice right there, our Y intercept, our X value is zero. So we set X equals zero. And now that we know X is equal to zero, we go ahead and we're going to solve for Y. So let's check our answer. Awesome. All right. So again, to find your X intercept, let Y equals zero. To find your Y intercept, let x equals zero. All right, it's that easy, folks. So now let's put this into practice. So question two. All right, so now they give us an equation. x plus 3y equals 6. All right, so what we're going to do here, they want us to find the x-intercept. So to find the x-intercept, check it out. To find the x-intercept, we're going to let y equals zero. So wherever you see that y, plug in zero. So we're left with x. Oh, where's my pen? All right, boom, there it is. X plus three times Y, but now we know that Y equals zero, all right? And that equals six. So wherever I saw that Y, I plugged in zero because we're trying to find that X intercept, all right? So make sure you jot that down. And now what's nice is this is always gonna disappear because anything times zero is zero. So we're left with X equals six. So our value here, our X intercept is the point six comma zero. All right, so there is our X intercept. So let's plug that in a six there and a zero here. Let's check our answer. All right, awesome. And so now let's find our Y intercept. So our Y intercept. So what did we say for the Y intercept? Well, now we're gonna let x equal zero for that y intercept, All right? So let's go back to our equation real fast, which was x plus three y. So now we have zero plus three y equals six. So that zero doesn't make any difference. So we have three y equals six, divide both sides by three, since we're trying to get that y by itself, and we get y equals two. So we just found the point zero comma two. All right. And there we have it. And what's nice is if you have the X and Y intercept, 
Now this part three is really easy to do. Now it's really easy to find our graph, right? So let's just plot both of those points. So let me clear this. So our first point, was, our second point was zero, two. So let me zero, height of two, there's one point. And our other point was six, zero, six, zero. And now we're just gonna connect those two dots. So there's our first point, our second point, boom. And there is our line, folks, right? So it's that simple. So let's check our answer. And there we have it. All right, let's do another question. Question three. All right, so this one, uh, you're gonna see some fractions. You might not be a fan of fractions. Don't worry, the process never changes. So uh, they want the x-intercept, so the x-intercept. So we're gonna let y equal zero, right? When we find that x-intercept. So we end up with three times zero equals two x. So we're left with zero equals two x. We're solving for x. Divide both sides by two, divide both sides by two, we said. So we end up with x equals zero. So both the X and the Y are both zero. So we end up with zero comma zero. So zero comma zero right there. Boom, let's check our answer. Awesome. And what's nice is whenever it's zero comma zero, your point is zero comma zero for your intercept, that's actually gonna be both your X and your Y. So we don't have to uh, find the Y intercept because we actually already did. Our y intercept is also zero comma zero. All right, and let's check our answer. There we go. And now, how do we graph this? Well, notice I really only have found one point, right? Because the x and the y intercepts were both zero comma zero, look at that point right there. So what I might wanna do is before I go ahead and graph this, I might wanna find another point. So let me write this down, 3y equals 2x. So 3y, 3y equals 2x. So let me let x equal, I don't know, um, one. So let x equal one. And you can allow x to equal whatever you want to find that second point. All right, so we end up with 3y equaling two times one, because we're letting x equal one, all right? And then so you end up with 3y equals two, divide both sides by three, and you get the point, or sorry, the y coordinate of two thirds. So the point we just found is one comma two thirds, and we're gonna need that second point in order to graph this. All right, so let's go ahead and plot these points. So the first point was the origin, zero comma zero. All right, and our second point, we're gonna have to use this guy right here, and we're gonna plot the point one comma two thirds. And we'll just leave it as a fraction like that. And then we'll hit plot point. Let me erase all this. All right, and there's our point. So now let's go ahead and let's connect those two. So there's our first point, there's our second point, and there we have it. There's our line. And we'll check our answer. And fantastic. All right, so. The, Again, a lot of people, they get nervous when they see fractions, the process doesn't change. So don't let it uh, mess with you. All right, uh, let's, I'm gonna save some of these for you. Let's do number seven. Let's see what number seven is about. Because some of you are like, oh no, word problems. All right, don't worry about word problems. So let's look at this. A taxi company in Miami charges $2 for any distance up to the first mile. So after the first mile, it charges $2, right? And then after that, it's an additional $1.10 per mile, right? So that's why we see it growing by $1.10 after that first mile. So the cost of the cab ride can be modeled graphically. So there, there we have our graph right here, all right? So part one, explain the uh, explain why the first part of the model is represented by the horizontal line. Well, we see as long as you haven't uh, passed that first mile, the price is fixed, right? You're gonna be charged $2 as long as that distance is less than or equal to a mile, right? So that's why that flat line is right here because the price has not changed. And that's what this graph represents. 
uh, the price, right? The cost of that cab ride, depending on how many miles we've gone. So let's, uh, the first part of the model is represented by a horizontal line because the cost of the cab ride is constant for distances less than one mile. And actually even uh, up to that mile, right? Cause we see that at one, it's still $2. All right, so let's check our answer. All right, part two, what does the y-intercept mean for the context of this problem, right? Because word problems, people are always like, oh man, they just check out when it comes to the word problems, right? Make sure you smash that like button if that's you. Like check out for word problems. You're like, man, I'm not having anything to do with word problems. Well, when you've driven zero miles, right? They charged you $2. So what this means is once your butt is in that cab, boom, it's two bucks, right? So that's what essentially it means. We haven't gone anywhere. So the white intercept indicates that for zero miles, right? That cost is $2. So for you to warm up that seat, you're getting charged two bucks. That's what it's telling you. All right, explain why the line representing the cost of traveling more than one mile is not horizontal. So they're asking, why is this guy going up like this? Why is it increasing? All well, we just said, for every additional mile, the price is increasing by $1.10. So for so after that first mile, the cost increases, right? The cost increases with increasing mileage. All right, so the cost, the cost gets more uh, depending on how, because you're traveling further, right? And so now the last question. All right, so let's look at this last part of the question. So how much would it cost for the cab, um, to take a cab for 1.5 miles? So notice um, 1.5 miles, well, we know that first mile, so that for that first mile, it's going to cost, we already said $2, right? But now we're traveling 1.5 miles total. So after that first mile, we're going to take that cab for an additional half mile, right? So we're going to take the cab for an additional half mile. And what we're going to do for that half mile is we're going to be charged at a rate of $1.10. Right? I believe that's what the rate is. Let me check real fast. $1.10, right? So let's go ahead and let's multiply that, right? So we're just taking half of 110. Let's just do this and make sure we don't make any silly mistakes, right? 55 cents. So 55 cents. So we'll add those two up. So that total to take that cab for 1.5 miles is $2 plus 55 cents. So $2 and 55 cents. So again, make sure you really understand uh, these word problems because any little thing here uh, can trip you up. So again, you're like, wait, why did I multiply one half times a dollar and 10 cents? Well, pretend this is our total distance, right? And what we did is for that first mile, right? For that first mile right here. So I'm gonna say everything in blue here is that first mile. Remember, they're charging you $2. And then after that first mile, the guy hits start on that meter. And for every mile that you go on that meter, he's charging you that dollar and 10 cents. But in this case, we didn't go a full mile, we just went half a mile. So for that half a mile, right right here, he charged you a rate of a dollar and 10 cents per mile. So we just multiply those two. And so this 55 cents represents how much you were charged to travel that additional half mile. So once we add uh, these two amounts, right, $2.55, that's what gave us the total cost for that car ride. All right, mathletes. So again, um, we started off by talking about X and Y intercepts, and then we looked at, you know, what do they mean? What do they look like in practice? Because I know once we get into the word problems, a lot of people um, really dislike <laughs> word problems. So we're here to help you out. So hopefully that helped you out, mathletes. Let me know in the comments below and we'll see you next time. Peace.